Thank you for taking time out to meet me at Science Centre today. It's my pleasure. So what are we doing today? We are going to make 3D printed potato tarts. Wow, potato tarts, that's my favourite. That's wonderful, shall we? Okay. This apron's for you. Thank you very much. Hey, what is this batch? I've not seen this batch before. Oh, it's the Young Food Scientist Batch by Science Centre Singapore. I understand that you didn't have this last time, right? That's right. It did not exist when I was doing the Young Scientist Club. I like the batches that you have. In fact, uh, would you like to see my batch as well? Yes, please. Okay. I have my batches over here. There you go. I love the way you put on your badge. How many badges do you have? I have 15 badges. Okay, I'll follow the way you put on your badge. Wow, some badges here I do not have, such as the young mathematician. Uh, that's one of my favourite. We can actually share some ideas together. Okay. Mm. What's your favourite young scientist badge? Well, that's a difficult question. I love them all. But in fact, one of my favourites is actually this badge. I'm a young chemist batch. Wow, but I heard that you were a physics teacher. How come your favourite batch is the young chemist batch? They're yeah, actually very sharp. In fact, um, um, that's an interesting question. And even though I'm a physics teacher, I love all areas of science. And that's why food science, which combines physics, chemistry and biology, in all its activities, is something that I look forward to doing. Wow, that's interesting. What's your favourite young scientist memory? Hmm, that's a difficult question. Um, it has been some time, so I can't really remember. But I do remember vaguely that I've done chemistry experiments involving uh, vinegar and baking soda. The Young Food Scientist program consists of a lot of chemistry tasks. Looks like your, the Young Scientist batch program did inspire some of your career. Shall we get started? Yes, please. all the ingredients and equipment that we need. Oh, looks well prepared. Is this one of the tasks for the Young Food Scientist Club? Yes, this is for task 16. It, but that is to bake a cake. In order to shorten time, we will be making potato tarts instead. I see. So how much potatoes do we need? We need 450 grams. Remember what you did for your food scientist uh, batch? Yep, even though I earned this batch in 2020. Right, so can you list some essential nutrients? Some examples are iron, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin B12 and calcium. Wow, that's right. So what happens if iron is insufficient? For example, if iron is insufficient, the most common consequence is anemia, in which the blood, red blood cells and the blood's ability to carry oxygen drops. Wow, that's a very good answer. Look, I think the potatoes are ready. Shall we take it out? Okay. that you're adding salt. Do you know what are the different tastes? The tastes are sweet, salty, sour, bitter and umami. That's right. Do you know what's umami? It's the savoury taste that we like. Wow, you sure know your food science batch activities well. I understand that you have been exploring about 3D food printers and found out that Science Centre has some 3D food printers too. Can you tell me more about it? Sure. 
in fact, this is a relatively new technology and it is currently being used for people with swallowing and chewing difficulties. Are 3D food printers used in hospitals? Oh, most definitely. A lot of these patients are stroke patients or the elderly. When they find swallowing or chewing difficulties, what we do with the 3D food printing is that the very fine um, food that goes into 3D food printers can help the patients to swallow and chew easily. Furthermore, the 3D food printers allows the food to be printed with different shapes and patterns that can appeal to the patterns of the patients. This way, they will enjoy their food much better as they see the different patterns uh, when, they, and when they consume the food. Wow! So in the future, patients will be able to taste and enjoy all different types of food because 3D food printers can print anything. Yes, that's right. But first, we have to put that into the capsules. Shall we put that in the capsules? Sure. Right, while we're waiting, let me give you a short quiz. What are the food that contains high amounts of carbohydrates? Rice, bread and potato. Mm, you know your stuff. What about for proteins? Meat, fish and beans. And for fats? Chocolate, butter and cheese. Wow, looks like the food science program has actually prepared you well. Oh, looks like the printer is finishing. Shall we have a look? I've only heard about 3D food printing, but I've never seen it before. Today is my first time seeing it. That's right. There may come a time in the future where 3D food printer may be so common that you can find it in the kitchen of um, many homes. But for now, it is already very common to get a normal three fuse deposition modeling 3D printer. Wow, the food that the 3D printers print are so symmetrical. Yes, in fact, you can even print other shapes like dinosaurs or even spoons and of different materials like chocolates or even pizza toppings. Do you like pizza? Yes. Mm, me too. Oh, look, maybe we can put in some more cheese. Could you help to get some cheese, please? Okay, I'll go get it now. Do you like cheese? Yes, I love it. Do you know how cheese are made? Cheese is formed when water is removed from milk. Wow, that's a good answer. In fact, do you know that there are more than 1,800 cheese out there? Five wow. cheese every day! In fact, cheese making is... There's a lot of science that goes into the cheese making process. First of all, the proteins in the milk has to coagulate, which means to come together. And then, what we will need to do is to have the solid curds and the liquid whey to be separated using a filtration process. After that, after we remove the liquid whey, we will then need to use microorganisms to be added to the cheese to ferment it and uh, allow the cheese to mature. And that's essentially the science behind the cheese making process. Wow, sounds complicated. Shall we add the cheese now? Yes, let's do. Thank you. Okay, let's go put in the oven. Wow, sure, that looks very nice. Mmm, it's delicious. Can you tell me more about your work? Sure. In fact, I brought my honey that I use when I teach some of my students. Siobhan, do you know the difference between... Do you know the similarities between honey and toothpaste? No, I don't. Okay. Right, so as you see, honey and toothpaste they are what we call non-Newtonian fluids. That means they do not obey Newton's law. This is very much different from water. So when honey or toothpaste is squeezed out of the tube, it starts to coil around and it actually will form this rotation as it's being squeezed out. Very different from water which flows straight down. So what my students and I will do in my science lab will be to explore this kind of phenomenon and we'll see how viscous or how sticky such non-Newtonian fluids are. 
How about you? Can you share with me some of your projects? Sure. This is one of my projects. In here, the, we put an egg in a glass cup. Then we filled the glass cup with vinegar. After soaking the egg in the vinegar for two days, the egg shell completely dissolved until it became like this. You can see the egg yolk and see what's inside the egg. Yes, the shell has almost disappeared. Thank you for sharing about your project and thank you for having me here today to learn about the Young Food Scientist program. Thank you for sharing your Young Scientist experience with me. I learned so much from you. Shall we clean up and head out together? Yes, let's go. Cool.